Welcome back to another fine edition of the Hollywood Redux Podcast. We are discussing Logan today, and it is one hell of a movie. Spoilerific, by the way. Welcome back to the Hollywood Redux Podcast. I'm your host, Matt. And I'm Michael. And we are coming to you from HollywoodRedux.com, and today we are talking about Logan. Logan! We got to see a sneak peek of Logan, and it is a fantastic film. But before we go on... We do have a spoiler warning. We are spoiler people in our reviews. We talk about specific things that uh, mean something to us in the movie. Yep. So if you do not want to be spoiled, turn this review off. Oh, Check out one of our other reviews uh, in the links below, yes. and uh, we'll see you after the movie. Yes. But for one of you weirdos that like to get spoiled before you go see the movie, we are here to uh, so discuss it. Enjoy it. Yeah, so uh, spoiler warning over. This movie's fantastic. It was great. Honestly... Everybody who I've talked to before going to this movie was, hey, I wonder if it's going to be good. Yeah. Like, because... We've the, had so many, so many hit and miss, oh no, so many misses in the Wolverine department. Yeah. I mean, it's such, for such a great character, and Hughes, honestly... Not Hugh's fault. Hugh Jackman slays it in this movie. He plays more than one character, which we'll get to in a little bit, but like... He fucking kills it. And the guy has killed it for 17 years. 17 whole years? 17 years playing Wolverine. And yeah. this guy still gets in shape every time. And he looks more and more yeah. in shape every time. He's not getting any younger. But he's destroying it. And he's yep. killing it. He's fucking so good in this movie. Anyway, we'll get right back to uh, that later. But pretty much where we pick up in this movie, it's a little bit in the future. It's like 30 years in the future. Yet everybody still uses the iPhone 7. Um, and It's 2029. It's 2029, and uh, everybody still has the iPhone 7, and uh, there's, like, futuristic cars and stuff, though, which is kind of cool. That was really cool. Um, you know, it was good world building and things like that, but we're picking up with Wolverine, and he's clearly sick, and he yeah. knows he's dying, and he's having a hard trouble, uh, you know, regenerating and, um, you know, healing himself and things like that. And he's also taking care of a really sick Patrick Stewart. Yeah. Who's kind of, like just withering away in a hospital bed and uh he's they keep su who's suffering with seizures and yeah and when he has a seizure it pretty much is like a weapon of mass destruction going off and it pretty much destroys and you get to see that a couple times throughout the movie which is pretty cool sequences yeah especially the one in the hotel the like hotel sequence is one of the best we'll get to that in a minute um so yeah he's basically taking care of a, a sick and dying patrick stewart yeah patrick stewart's like you're just waiting for me to die and they have caliban there played by stephen merchant who uh, you know, you find out later in the movie that he had a big role in basically helping, you know, the Weapon X program basically wipe out mutants. Yeah. Um, and they're pretty That's much sad. the last mutants in the world, or so they think, until they meet Laura. Laura. Uh, with the help of Gabriella, uh, who we think is her mom at first, but it turns out to be just a nurse who helped all the kids Help escape all. basically a brand new Weapon X program. Yeah. And uh, that was, we. That was so tragic to see all the kids <sighs> just killing. And there were. They were so numb to it. Yeah, or like, or they killed themselves, you know, yeah. and oh, things like that. The like, the dude just jumped, jumped off, off the, the building. The building, that was terrible. Holy shit. Anyway, I'll, I'll get ahead so we can talk about yeah. some choice scenes. But, um, so basically, they get to a point where Gabriella is murdered, uh -huh. and they have to make a choice of bringing Laura slash X-23 to North Dakota. Yeah, that's... And it's basically kind of a road chase movie after that. And they make a couple stops and things like that along the way, which we'll get to, but like... Uh, some of the some of the things like James Mangold just like just like killed it in this. And honestly, I think like it doesn't really I don't feel like they did anything much different from any other Wolverine movie except for the hard R rating. Yeah, because honestly, that is what made the difference for me. Being able to hear Logan cuss and like him and Charles going back and forth, you know, and actually are saying so good. and it just made it. I mean, like it was like two actors that clearly have been working together for 17 years yeah trusted each other and like just killed it and they you know they had a lot of fun you could tell their friends on and off set you know yep. and like so it was really big when um charles ultimately dies and uh which was a huge when we were there so basically oh. we get to a point where they stop to help a family whose horses got loose on a freeway and the family offers them like room and board for the night and so of course, and the Munsons a... uh, with um, uh, Eric LaSalle played the dad, Will Munson. Yeah. And it was a great family. They took him in a great place. And all of a sudden, you know, fucking Wolverine stabs Patrick Stewart in the heart. And you're like, what the fuck? And after, it... he re after, <laughs> after he remembered that he killed a huge number of people. And you're just like, what the fuck is going he... on here? And it turns out 
it's a clone of Wolverine X24. Yeah. It's a clone of younger Wolverine. So then you get to literally see young Wolverine, Hugh Jackman, fighting old Wolverine, Hugh Jackman, and it is fucking Amazing. balls to the wall cool. Yes. And it is a very powerful sequence, you know, when they go to bury Patrick Stewart. Like, that was the first time I ever thought in a comic book movie I was going to, like, lose it. Yeah. And I was choked up. Michael did his patented fucking <sighs> sad turn and cry with tears streaming down yep. his face. There it comes. But, like, back. it... About and it. that's where like Hugh Jackman really soars in this movie are where, you know, when he has to be tough guy, like he obviously does all the working out and everything and he, he can kick ass and like yeah. he can do all the stunts and, and you know, the stunt team is amazing in these Absolutely. films. Absolutely. And destroys it. But it takes a real talent behind you know, and acting chops to be able to in that moment just say something as simple as, Well, there's a lot of water. And break down yeah. and see for the first time the human side really of Wolverine outside of like when like Gene died but like I don't really like to talk about X-Men 3 but like you know you get to see him really have an emotional moment and it's yeah. such a real moment and like you've been with this group of people for so long and you see like this is one obviously universe where this happens Yeah. but man it is so powerful and um, you know that was like my favorite scene in the whole movie was that moment because I lost it yeah. That, and then the other, surprisingly, the other funeral scene. The other funeral scene was tragic as well as, uh, you know me, I <laughs> had my cry sesh. And it, it was it was so amazing. And then one thing that I wanted to note is the crowd, the audience, they all reacted the same way. Um, when Laura adjusted the cross that was over the grave of, of Logan to an X. Yeah, she knocked it over on the side. And the camera just that was a baller. It's beautiful. Fucking moment, and that was a, such like that was like the oh, like everybody was just whoa. Yeah. And she recites the the whole end speech from Shane because she watched it with Patrick Stewart. Yep. Um, it's beautiful. And I mean, God, and that whole sequence at the end too, where you know, basically, uh, I, I literally turned to Michael in the movie and I said, "He's gonna release the beast." Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and he like he juices it up, and he yep. fucking has this amazing sequence where he stands up, and he and X twenty four is beaten, and the kids help, and the kids get away, and, and it's it's such a great ending. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing that kind of bugged me about the movie was when Laura started to talk earlier. I get the comedy of it; it was perfectly it was funny. It was perfect for Lo- Logan and things, but you know, it was one of those things where I felt like when she said "Daddy" at the end, when she was holding his hand as he's dying, that if they waited to have that be her first word, I would have lost my shit. Absolutely. I would have been a blubbering mess. <laughs> not to not, not say, to say it wasn't he powerful. Wasn't already. <laughs> yeah, no, it was already just like, fuck man. Like we knew it was coming. But like, God, it's so artfully and tastefully yeah. done. James Mangold, I'm so excited you want to do X twenty three. I'm stoked. I yes. think that's amazing. I think the entire writing team of Michael Green, Scott Frank and James Mangold uh, did a fantastic job. Mm-hmm. Um, and we didn't even really get... I mean, Stephen Merchant was great in this film. He was fantastic from the beginning Absolutely. to end. Absolutely. That whole farm scene, uh, up to him blowing himself up. Beware the light. Boom. Ooh, awesome. Awesome. And, like, Daphne King, who played Laura uh, slash X-23, mm-hmm. fucking phenomenal job. Even Pierce, played by uh, Boyd Holbrook, yeah. like, with that, like, Cajun accent and everything. Fantastic villain. You loved it when it came to an end and things like that. But, you know, everybody did a great job. Eric LaSalle was great. You know, Elizabeth Rodriguez as Gabriella was great. The only person that kind of didn't stand out and who should have been more of a villain, uh, you know, which I felt like it kind of <laughs> fell flat, was Dr. Rice, yeah. played by Robert E. Grant, who just had a weird, like, you know, safari jacket on the whole time and then dies. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, there are so many things about this movie. From beginning to end, the acting yeah. is top-notch. The writing Absolutely. is great. The cinematography is fantastic. And a quick nod to the special effects makeup team. The makeup effects blended with the visual effects in this movie were perfect for Wolverine and Logan and and the X-Men in general. They got it right. It's fucking great to see these fights and actually see them punch through somebody's head right in camera. And they put those special makeup effects right in camera. It's it's crazy. It's really good. X-24's eyes just totally heals. Yeah. So anyway, check out fucking Logan. (laughs) Logan is amazing. Check it out on March 3rd. It comes out. We strongly recommend it. Great film. Hugh Jackman, amazing job. James Mangold, excuse me, James Mangold, 
fantastic job. Yep. Bring us more movies like that to the X-Men universe, and you will just be making buttloads of money, Fox. Just, just trust it. Trust it. But for the Hollywood Redux podcast this week, that's going to do it for us. I'm Matt. You can catch me at Splashdown1 on all social media. I'm Michael, and I'm at what the Hess. And we're always coming to you from HollywoodRedux.com. Check out all of our other stuff there, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching that video. If you'd like to see more just like it, click the options to my side over here. You can also subscribe or even buy a shirt from our store. While you're at it, why don't you give this video a thumbs up? You deserve it.